With all the site events at Pro Tour Los Angeles well behind us, and reports from other larger events in the time since, I think we finally have a solidified Blitz meta, with Miss Veil, vale, of course, on the near horizon. But it's a long time until then, and the next skirmish season to bring rotation. So today I'm covering my ultimate and bestest Blitz format tier list in spring of 2024. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, my flesh and blood Blitz friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando and go again. A fabulous cast. Thanks so much for tuning in today, talking my ultimate and bestest tier list. No list could possibly be as good or better than this list. List. But yes, thanks for tuning in. Now, this has certainly been a weird situation for Blitz, right? With skirmish season so far away, potentially even August, maybe July, we don't even quite know yet. But we just don't have a large, super competitive sample size. We've had plenty of side events at many callings, Pro Tour Los Angeles, and so on, but realistically, only 100 LL points have been accumulated since heavy hitters drop in January. 80 of them went to Victor, and 20 of them went to Prism. However, that certainly doesn't dictate the larger meta, and I believe that if we had a skirmish season today, the result would be quite different. Now, early last month, I asked if anyone could dethrone Briar as the best Blitz hero. The answer is kind of. Victor hasn't dethroned her entirely, but he is certainly sharing the throne. And that leads us into what I'm calling our top tier heroes, which I have Briar, the Emperor, Victor, and Reinar. The other categories we'll be looking at are Legit Contender, Sure, Why Not, Highly Unlikely, and then No Chance. So I do want to point out that there are currently 41 legal Blitz heroes. Now, that comes with a caveat of some of those are still the UPF heroes, probably not realistically in the running. That's why I have them in the no chance. But putting it into perspective, if we spend a lot of time on 41 heroes, well, you're in for a long video. So in the interest of time, we're going to move relatively quickly, highlighting on some of the heroes that I think are actually worth really digging into and talking about. So as I mentioned in the top tier, we do have Briar and Victor, who I do believe are slightly ever so ahead in the top tier. Victor being able to sit down with so freaking much armor in this format is just crazy. Granted, the other Guardians can do that, but Victor also gets stuff off blocking. He's just the best Guardian all around right now, so he's definitely where he is. Briar is still crazy good. She's explosive. She's tanky. She can do everything she wants to do, continues to put on the pressure, has the arcane. Super awesome. The Emperor also is, not only is he super cool and super fun to play, he's just really good. Right, If you can get your opponent down into that 7, 8, 9 range, and even with AB2, with the right thing, wait for him to expand and just kill shot. Right, Storm Striders in this format we've seen is very, very, very strong. Applies to him as well, but he also has good armor, great attacks, great go again. Fantastic hero. Then I also have Reinar in this bucket because Reinar is in the point where he can consistently do disgusting things. Right, It might not be the turn 0 quadruple intimidate, which certainly happens, but he can absolutely set up triple intimidates and a lot to just punch stuff through, and eventually you're just out of armor to fight against it, and there's nothing you can do about it. Moving into the legit contenders, that's right, you see there's a lot of folks there, and that's because, hey, again, this is Blitz, and a lot of things can happen. Bravo's here because he's legit good in his own right, and he also has the Guardian thing where he can sit down with just a boatload, truckload of armor. Prism is also phenomenal because, hey, she's still legal, still has Luminaris, and to that point, I'm going to go ahead and jump forward to Advent Prism, who also can use old Luminaris, which was very clearly never intended to be able to use her with the Angels and the Auras. Both of them could be pretty gross if they're allowed to put up board state. Advent Prism is a little behind just because she starts so low on health, but if she can get the wards and start popping off, bad things happen to you very, very, very quickly. Leviah is in there also because she can absolutely pop off, not to the same extent as Reinar, but with what she can do with Art of War and Slithering Peed and all this stuff back and forth, she's very gross as well. Vincette is also a very, very legitimate contender within Blitz. Potentially could even go into top tier, but still faces the Rune Blade occasionally things go wrong for you issue. Vincette's challenge also of being forced to banish the card can also create some really awkward forced blood debt situations if 
they get in a point where they have to block. So every now and then, I think that that brings them down into this where, hey, things could go very well for them, but if you get that off chance where it's not, and you got to go through a whole tournament to make it happen. So I think they're in the legit contender, but definitely not in top tier at this point, as long as those other heroes are up there. Quickie P or Dorinthia Quicksilver Prodigy also very much belongs in this legit contender. Given the right field, given the right matchup, she absolutely is very well positioned to several of the top tier heroes as well, which puts her in a really good spot. Shiana, we've talked about quite a bit on this channel in the last month, two months or so. We've even seen some legit gameplay from Billy at Gongai, where he's been doing some pretty good stuff there. Pummel Shiana is really gross with all the new specs she picked up in heavy hitters, put her in a really good spot. And I shudder, I absolutely shudder to think what she might potentially pick up in Mistvale. That's pretty scary. Data Doll Go Burr. Absolutely, Data Doll can do things setting up those multiple pistol shots. Data Doll's a very interesting hero in that she doesn't defend, she just kind of has to go. She doesn't necessarily start very strong, but all of a sudden there's a board state and you're facing down pistol. You cannot really try to fatigue Data Doll, which you would think you could with all the boosts they have to do. You really cannot do that. She can hold her own. Yoji is on here as well, only because, really, Guardian. Now you'll notice that Velda is not on here. It's because I think functionally, Yoji, if you're going with him, you're going with fatigue. So you're sitting down with just this tanky 22 health with a whole boatload of armor. It's just a lot to slog through if they're doing the life gain thing. can absolutely show up and just bore all of your opponents all the way into the top table. Young Arm KO's on here as well because, again, just explosive. He's a very consistent aggro hero throwing in the you know low to mid-teens consistently every single turn. It's just a lot to deal with, and he also has, that's right, especially with the new card coming in the KO deck, also has a legitimate amount of armor that he can sit down with. One that I do think legitimately belongs in this category is Teclavasin, and that's specifically the Bright Lights Teclavasin, not the Professor version. The instant thing really does seem to help gain ground. This deck is very interesting in that it just folds to Arcane, like it just can't deal with Arcane at all. Briar, being so prevalent in the meta, really runs him down. But he can absolutely tank out a lot of other players, and once they get going, it's just kind of game over, right? And that's one of the interesting things about how binary this hero is. He really just either kind of folds, and if you can't race him down, then the game's just over. And there are very few heroes in this game to which you legit concede to at a certain point and Teclavasin is one of them, and, you know, depending on how you feel about that either way, it doesn't matter. I think he belongs in this category. So moving into the sure why not category, again, this is Blitz. So this is, hey, again, if everything lines up, goes the right way, you get a couple of explosive games, things could absolutely happen. All of the heroes in this band are completely legitimate heroes, but for several reasons aren't necessarily just as good as the other heroes that are many it may even be within the same class specifically. Okay, going with Dash. OG Dash is very, very, very good. A lot of people have been, you know, on the boost strategy for a long time, specifically the, you know, the hash pound boost is what I call it, where they start with the Tecla Pounder. Got a lot of great new tools there, but still with as much armor as in the format, very, very, very susceptible to fatigue. But again, there's some smart people out there who have learned how to play around that and can do things with it. Azalea, well, with all the love we've seen her getting in CC, a lot of that will probably translate over to Blitz as well. But you have folks like Arthur Mills who've been able to just sling those arrows for even during the Kasai days, was taking down skirmishes. There are certainly, with the right pilot, right conditions, Azalea can show up and absolutely win an armory or even a skirmish. Moving into Database Dash, I have a lot of confidence and a lot of faith in this hero to be able to do things I do know that she's been underperforming by and large, but I really think that someone's going to come up with the magic and the sweetness. So again, I think, sure, why not? She could absolutely show up and win. Phi, I still think, is also very solid right now. Playing him on both either just the straight draconic version or the rupture version, very aggressive. They pulled the Art of Wars at right time, especially in a short format like Blitz. I don't think there's a lot you can do. Mass triggers and all that, all of a sudden, it's just too much to handle. We have Kasai on here as well, but Dynamos is just phenomenal in this, hell, hell in any format. But it has Dynamos, has great armor, has dual attack possibility. 
really good hero. Uh, her and her herself, is she going to build an army or something like that? I think likely not in Blitz. Probably the Copper Path is the way to go there, but even so can just present consistent damage. Olympia is very much in the same boat, kind of, again, sure, why not? I don't think either Kasai nor Olympia are as good as Quicksilver Prodigy. Quicksilver Prodigy has the advantage of having the same weapon that comes twice, which means that your pumps to that weapon hold like Steel Blade Supremacy, also the specs there. So again, that's why I think both of these heroes not as good as Quicksilver Prodigy. Bolton. Bolton has actually been exceeding my expectations as of late. There's some very loyal players who've been able to figure out ways to make him work. And again, if you can get the Luminous to line up correctly, well, that'll do, Peg. Velda, again, I spoke to her kind of with Yoji. Legit good. Guardians are just good in this format, but I think she's just worse than Yoji. And I think the Sift Velda thing doesn't work as well as it used to. So I think you have to play her fatigue more so, but I think Yoji just does that better. Betsy, I also have in this category because sure, probably could, but by and large, what Betsy's trying to do is just worse than what the other Guardians do. Also have Katsu in this range. That might be disrespecting Katsu a little bit, but I find that with the armor and just the speed that the other heroes can stick him down, once Katsu starts having to block, it really kind of throws off what he wants to do. And that's why I think it's a sure why not. He could absolutely win, but I think probably from an overall standpoint, he probably belongs where he belongs. I now have the Professor, much of the same positives in terms of what Teklo Vasen can do, right? And that's the OG Teklo Vasen or whatever we want to call it. But the Bright Lights Teklo Vasen, much of the same applies here. Professor actually has the advantage in the weapon, but the fact that he can't do things as instance, I think hurts him a little bit in terms of trying to get that, that build economy. And then we move to our Assassin Uzri. Uzri, I think, just can't produce the damage output overall that's needed. Has to rely way too much on her on hits. And with a lot of armor, people will definitely overblock with armor just to pull off the combo to, you know, if they're afraid you're coming in with a shakedown or something like that. They'll just throw extra armor or the extra card, whatever it may be, just so they can pull off their combo. And I think you just can't recover from that in this format. Right now we move into the highly unlikely. These are folks that I, you know, again, they probably could get points. And actually I, I can almost promise you that once we go into skirmish season around the globe, some of these folks will get points. Actually, we saw it on many of them last time. But if you look at it overall, I think it's going to be a very big challenge for most of these heroes. Benji is actually super cool. Who knows what Benji is going to get in terms of tiger tech in the next uh, set. There's two real ways to play him right now. There's a dagger way. There's a tiger way. There's, well, I guess there's three because there's a hybrid way as well. Uh, but again, he starts with too little health. The, 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 health the, the health gap that he starts with, I think, is too little in the current format without having a lot of armor to back him up, right? You look at someone like Phi who can sit down with two on mask, two on fist, three on the chest piece and then snappies, right? So that's quite a bit more armor than Benji's sitting down with, considering Benji really, really, really needs mass to work. You look at Dromai, I think Dromai is just kind of outgunned in this format as well. Riptide, Riptide can absolutely do things. I, I think it's highly unlikely that he cuts through. Could happen, but I, I think it's highly unlikely. Max, I think just people by and large haven't figured out yet. Max is... I think way more susceptible to fatigue than dash because I mean, just functionally, if you aren't playing max to try and do hyperdriver and build the mech, then why aren't you just playing dash and starting with an item? I mean, I think that's just the reality of the situation. KO. I also and this is OG KO. I have this highly unlikely. Sure. You could roll your way through a five or six round tournament, I suppose. But again, the odds are not in your favor. May the odds forever not be in your favor. Uh, ASC, as much as it pains me to put him down here with the prisms, if I think this is a very, very, very good hero. I had my deck in a really great spot, and it was working well until kind of the rise of prism, and right, you can't really cut through Yoji and the Guardians, and I, it's really hard to get those on hits through, and it's just way too much health to chew through with what you can output. So again, as much as it pains me, 
ASC is highly unlikely to do well. And I also have to put Arachne in this category for many of the same arguments as Usri, but I think Usri probably does it just a tad bit better. So I think that's where, for now at least, with Miss Vale on the horizon and Assassin Tech incoming, I think that's where Arachne sits. And Bravant I have down here. We did see Bravant get points in the last season. I believe it was uh, two wins uh, by the same individual. Again, you can log points. And it really speaks, I think, overall, the fact that Bravant is effectively a 20 health hero with no effective ability in the format really strength to the str speaks to the strength of the Guardian package overall within the format. And then in the no chance category, sorry, Adam, I got to put your boy Cav Dane down there in the no chance. Again, someone will prove me wrong. He'll pick up two points in a skirmish season. I get it. Uh, but I think that by and large, Cav Dane, Melody, and Genus have really no chance at logging points other than through straight manipulation. All right now, if you've been doing your counting, you know that there's two heroes that I've left out. That's Dorinthia and Lexi. And these are what I'm considering my hot picks because I want to put Dorinthia lower, uh, OG Dorinthia lower than I think many people would. I know with the steam that she's picked up in CC with the hatchets, you can do very good things. Uh, but you need to remember that again in this format with the relative speed of it and the armor, being able to shut down her go wides in this format I think is a lot easier. Because again, she has less time, you know, if it was a 40 health format and you could shut it down a couple of times, she could recover and keep coming at you with value, it would be better. But I unfortunately have to put down, put Dorinthia down in sure why not category. And Lexi, I'm actually putting higher. I'm putting Lexi in the legit contender category. I've seen a couple builds out there that are very similar. It's a Death Dealer Ice build using Arctic Incarceration and lots of Frostbites and uses Shock Charmers, Death Dealer for the extra card draw, throws a dominated big attack with a couple cards in hand. You get those three of a kinds lined up, throw that dominated attack. Things get ugly. Things get very, very ugly. I have a lot of faith in that deck, and therefore I'm putting it into the legit contender category. So we're well into this one. That is the Blitz meta as I see it today. Please let me know in the comments what you're thinking, what you agree with or disagree with. Again, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at things because, hey, Blitz is explosive, and I do favor explosive. I do favor the potential for explosivity more in this format than I would in like a commoner or even a CC, something like that. Okay, so that's my take. But again, let me know yours. Happy Friday, fab folks, and go commando.